Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What is Shonen Archive? It is the very probably long running until one of us goes. I don't know, that seems really dark for an opening. But we're going to be <laughs> going until we can't anymore. Going through all the Shonen Jump anime possible. Starting with Gintama also doing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX on the side. Previously, on the last episode, we watched uh, episode 40 and 39, was it? 38 through 40. 38 through 40. And I couldn't remember if we did three or two uh, because of the busy schedule, but now we were able to see the full five. So today we're going to be talking about episode 41, 42, 43, 44, and 45. So let's get into it. And uh, I usually usually save this at the end, but I'm going to say it at the beginning because I lost like 15 subs. You should totally subscribe to me if you're new. <laughs> if you're enjoying it. <laughs> Uh, make sure you guys have been leaving likes and subscribing, so I'd be even very thankful. But if you're on the edge, just know that, hey, B, don't be like those other dudes who are silently doing it. Be loud and say, hey, I'm subbing <laughs> to the year. <laughs> yeah, make it known. Let it be known. <laughs> I'm here to hear these guys explain jokes to me from a, from an anime. I'm here for that. And let's get right into it. With episode 41, you can't judge a movie by its title. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what it's all about. This is the next episode of the Kagura's Father uh, series set, I guess. They consider uh, it the, arc, so I'm calling it. Yeah, arc. the, the shape shifting alien that was supposedly defeated by uh, Umibozu in the last episode is not dead. Um, Kagura and her dad are on the trip, uh, like on a ship, uh, about to leave the planet, and she's all down because Gintoki told her to leave and wouldn't let her come back. Um, Shimpachi is outraged by Gintoki not caring about Kagura's feelings and wants to go and get her. Uh, then he says that he's going to leave, uh, odd jobs as well, that he also quits. Um, Gin is sitting there, and Sadaharu finds a letter that Gintoki is hiding in his uh, sleeve. And then we cut to the terminal, and Prince Hata is shown on the ship because he is apparently just the cause of every problem in the world. <laughs> um, the world and one of his friends. pet things breaks, which is the corpse of the shapeshifter thing that they thought they killed last time. Um, and it starts growing in the terminal because it feeds on uh, energy. So it's feeding on the energy required to sustain all of the starships in the terminal. And so it's attacking the ship that they're on. Kagura and her dad start fighting it while Shinpachi is eventually sneaks past security with his dumbass. Like he keeps trying to give different, like really tropey excuses. Like first it was. Um, my girlfriend is on the plane and she's going to yeah. work with someone and running away say, with her sugar daddy or something. Yeah. And then he was like, actually it's my father is like, he had a bunch of bad excuses. Yeah. And, and eventually both, he, uh, both times he gets caught. Cause it's like, it looks like you haven't had a girl in 16 years. It's like, how'd you know yeah. how old I was? And then yeah. the other time it's like, you Oh yeah. Like you, a look, guy. you look like your dad's dad. <laughs> and he's like, how did you guess that? Oh, um, that was funny. Yeah, and so then he wants to stay and help, but Umibozu tells him to get away. Um, and he heads over to the destroyed wreckage of the ship, and he finds Prince Hata, and he's like, where, uh, Have you where's seen Kagura? A... And we look over, and we see that her umbrella is laying on the ground, and that she is uh, knocked out and bleeding like crazy. And it ends there. Yeah. Uh, I will say one thing we did forget to mention is that, uh, uh, Gintoki was doing a odd job trying to promote, uh, Aliens vs. Yakuza with, uh, Sadaharu, who is the only member left of, <laughs> of his crew. So they're in the, the costumes and he sees on the news that Kagura is fighting the alien and he rushes in to save him with Sadahara. And then they both get eaten, even though they have a very... Oh, like, yeah, they get eaten immediately. They do. They have a big old hero moment where he's <laughs> on the dog, and he's like, yeah! And then he gets immediately eaten. 
um, this episode just to go to, to try and make it as quick as possible because it's actually kind of important to talk about the other episode because I feel like these three episodes are very much entwined with each other and how to talk about Yeah, it. I mean, they're a set to get to the, the next one, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say that at the beginning, when we're learning about Kagura's backstory about her home planet and how it was, I'll say Gintoki was right. Kagura is the face of poverty, and he was 100% right on the money about her. Because <laughs> they show her living up, and it's an extremely rough life. So I was looking, and I was like, oh, he was right. It wasn't just the fact that he that, that she lives with them and she's very poor. She actually did have an extremely bad uh, upbringing going up. Uh, I like the kind of foreshadowing a little bit, bringing up her big brother. I don't know much about the brother other than he exists, and that's only because of Jampudi that I know he exists. So it was nice to kind of hear about him a little bit. I like the Shinpachi trying to get his way in there, and both times he's immediately caught. He can't even pretend to lie at all. Uh, I liked Umibozo in this one. Um... One, because he had a very dumb uh, poop joke when he was trying to get into there, and Prince Hada was in there. Yes, and... he had to poop really bad, and he couldn't yeah. get through the door. And every time he's trying, he's like, I need to open the door. And lady's like, please stop telling jokes. He's like, I'm not joking. I really need to go to the bathroom. He's like, please, sir, stop being funny. Stop trying to stop breaking the laughs. And he's not really telling any hilarious jokes. Yeah, he's, he's just, just, he actually is going to shit himself. He's like, I'm not joking. I'm literally just going to, you think it's funny if I just poo my pants right here? And then when he jumps in there, Prince Hada immediately drops because he was terrified of what just happened there. Uh, I like it. This is a continuing joke with Prince Hada's handler of him immediately disrespecting the prince. <laughs> this after building up and saying you should always respect him, he immediately calls his. He's like, protect the, the treasures of the prince. They're very important to him. And then he trips over. He's like, who put this garbage here? <laughs> who put? Yeah, who put this junk here? <laughs> And he's like, oh, it's that idiot's belonging. He's like, he's an idiot? I thought you said he was super important and he was your prince. Um, I like that when is looking for uh, Kagura, he starts describing her as, have you seen someone that looks exactly like me? He's like, he's like oh, she has giant circle eyes, a cute, a cute face, you know, just like mine. <laughs> yeah, have you seen someone that looks just like I do <laughs> yeah. every time? Yeah. And then when uh, Prince Hada is like, um, he, uh, he eventually scares them into saying like, oh, we saw someone that looks exactly like you, sir. <laughs> she was she was the one who protected us. I also did like the moment where um, Umi Bozo's looking to immediately destroy them for basically just watching. Because w- when they point to Kagura, she's just like bleeding out to the side, <laughs> like really close by. And they didn't bother to help her at all. And he's immediately like, you just are watching her slowly bleed to death? What's wrong? He's like, he's about to go destroy them. And she grabs a hold of his umbrella and she says, please don't kill the people that I literally just went out of my way to protect. It'd be very nice. Yeah. (laughs) Don't kill the people that I rescued. Yeah. And I also like that moment where she's talking about... um, actually trying to change where she was able to because Umi Bozo is very much making it known that his people are known for kind of like destruction and in general just like they're 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 not very violent like reputation yeah they're like very very violent people yeah yeah very violent people even when he's helping um Shinpachi because he does save Shinpachi it does kind of look like he was aiming for Shinpachi the entire time which is why Shinpachi was also probably pretty scared at that moment too. But when uh, Kagura does that moment where she's like, I wasn't looking out for myself. I actually was able to save someone. So it is possible to change. Um, I really like that because it, the entire time he was, he, it, it, you kind of got into his mind a little bit more of kind of going like, it, 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 he's very much set in his ways about like, our people are the way we are. There's really no way of changing it. It's very unfortunate, but that's just the life that we have to live with. And that's the life I've kind of come to understand. Um, so that Kagura's that so the fact that Kagura is actually changing stuff and is doing something that he would not expect is was very nice and it was very touching as well. And yeah, and I also liked the part where Kentucky is with Sadahara because he never actually hangs out with him. So when they have him in the little alien costume and he's trying to do Yakuza versus aliens trying to do the promotion for it. It's like the world's shittiest promotion. And when he's going to go save the day, he looks at the camera and says Aliens versus Yakuza now in theaters. Yeah, because their job was to to promo it, and the 
Hasegawa is watching him do that crying, and he's like, we've already been fired. <laughs> <laughs> we've already been fired, Gintoki. It's too late. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I really liked this episode. I thought it was really good. It was a good continuation of the previous one and a good lead in into the next one. How do you feel? Uh, I also liked it. It was really good. Um, the Shinsengumi did the alien think. What, what would your mother think? What joke would your again? mother think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your mother didn't raise you to be this kind of alien. <laughs> and then he comes out. Kondo comes out in a completely different alien costume. <laughs> yeah, he does. Um. So that was good. Uh, I like also when him and Shinpachi are doing the Yakuza vs. Alien promo and they do the freeze frame. And oh. Hasuga was like, this is the only part you did well. <laughs> this is the only <laughs> part you practiced. Yeah, he's like, you're, you're, you're not impressing me by just holding it on, by the way. Because the entire time he's berating them, they're not moving at all. <laughs> yeah, he's yelling at them and they're they're staying in the freeze frame. And he's like, this is stupid. <laughs> Um. Yeah, it was a good one, and, and Kagura's like up to this point, she's been kind of a nothing character. Like her, she had her intro thing where she kind of talked about this a little bit, and then she's been sort of a nothing character as far as like being developed. She's just kind of like comic relief girl. So it's nice to see her get some stuff, and the stuff she's getting is really good. A lot of the stuff that we've been getting has kind of been like you know the stuff in the when uh, Kintoki lost his memory, kind of. An understanding of like, well, she's very loyal and she's very much like, like we both really like Hagra, we really like this, but it was kind of nice to actually kind of see what her backstory is and what her actual kind of motivations for kind of staying around and doing stuff is. It also kind of, also, which also leads into the next episode of kind of understand why she was so adamant about not going in the beginning as well, because it kind of all ties in here by the time we get to the end. But yeah, that's episode yes. 41. Good job. I can't remember if it was this episode, but I think eventually I realized during the ED, because I've been paying attention to a lot of the things in the background, I realized that there's a slam dunk reference in the basketball. In one of the uh, pictures? Yeah, because it's a basketball. They're wearing the same color as the main team in slam dunk. They're fighting against a team that wore the same colors. And also, um, Kondo is called a gorilla, and there's a character in slam dunk that has the move called the gorilla dunk. <laughs> And he's also called Gorilla constantly. So I was like, oh, okay, that has to be a reference to that. So I was like, okay. Because in the beginning, I thought I was like, I saw them playing basketball. And then I was like, well, maybe it could be any of the many Shodin Jump uh, basketball animes that they have. But when I saw the that Kondo was actually in, I was like, okay, no, no, it has to be it. I finally realized that. I was like, all right, that's pretty nice. Pretty cool. And now let's talk about episode 42, which is you know what happens if you pee on a worm. Which is, yeah, you know what happens if you pee on a worm. Which is something I had never learned about until, I guess, this episode, that there was a thing about peeing on worms. I didn't know that was a thing either, yeah, but apparently. I'm, and I'm too afraid to look it up. I'm not going to Google that. <laughs> I don't need mine. Yeah, that's that's not something I want in my browser history. No, no, thank you. They already got enough bad shit on me. I don't need to add this to it as well. <laughs> Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what happens in it. Uh, So... Umibozu um, rushes over to help Kagura, and in the process, uh, his arm gets bitten off. He has like a prosthetic arm, though, so it's okay, sort of. Um, the alien grabs her and is going to eat her, but Gintoki appears, uh, riding Sadaharu. They like bust out of another one of the mouths after they got eaten. <laughs> yeah. um, and they try to rescue her, but he's not able to get to her in time. He just misses her. And the monster, like, absorbs her. Um, Gintoki and Umibozu start teaming up, uh, but, like, shitting on each other the whole time. <laughs> like, they're talking all the shit to each other the entire time. Um, and then the... Uh, the... What's his fucking name? The old, the head of the Shinsengumi that's not Matsudani. Kondo, the one above him. Yes. Appears on like a bunch of battle, like warships yeah. that literally look like flying boats, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna blow this shit up with the super cannon." Uh, and Kondo tries to talk them out of it because he knows that Umibozu, Kagura, and Gintoki are up there, but he doesn't give a shit. Um, Kagura ends up getting more. sucked into the alien's core, and so they're not able to destroy the core anymore because he's basically using her as like a meat shield. 
to stop them from blowing it up. Uh, so Umibozu just kind of gives up and just says that Kagura and I will die together here, and that's okay too. But Kentoki's like, fuck that. How about you have some faith in her, and we'll, we'll I'll go get her. And so he gets himself absorbed into the core uh, to try and, and wake her up. Uh, Shinpachi, Sadaharu, and I think it, it's Prince Hata and like his servant, I think, are mm-hmm. also there. Yeah. Um, to, making like, up for to try the to get them to delay it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And they're they're using him, his like diplomatic status, as a way to get them to not fire the cannon yet. Uh, and then they do so. And then he's like, oh, we can't shoot anymore. The prince is there. And the old man is like, hey, which one is the button that shoots the cannon? And he's like, oh, that one. And he goes, oh. And he just pushes it. <laughs> um, Using the excuse that he needs to go to his daughter's uh, birthday to it's prevent her birthday. Them. Yeah, yeah, because prevent... he's not going to leave her unsupervised with her boyfriend. Yep. Uh, <laughs> which we know he cares deep about <laughs> of keeping yes, her away from after the other episode. Um, eventually, uh, Gintoki tells Kagura, like in her subconscious, that he's eating her pickled seaweed. And she wakes up in like a berserker rage and uppercuts him so hard that they both fly out of the core. Throwing um, fists too when she's out. <laughs> yeah, she's just swinging all over the place because she's not actually awake. She's just like throwing a fit while she's unconscious. Um, Umi Bozu blocks the cannon shot from the old man just barely and manages to save everybody. Um, and then him and Gintoki are having like a heart to heart on top of a bridge, and they are peeing on the corpse of the <laughs> alien worm, which is the the whole thing about not peeing on a worm. Uh, they're peeing on the alien worm's corpse, talking to each other, and uh, Umibozu tells the story about how Kagura's brother is the one who cut his arm off because of some weird Yato ritual that's like, prove you're better than your parents by killing parent, them. Parent killing, yeah. Parent killing, yeah. Um, and he... Got like he was gonna end up killing his son, and it's only the only reason he didn't is because Kagura stopped him. Um, and then he was afraid that one day Kagura would try to attack him as well, and if she did, then he wouldn't be able to stop himself from killing her. So he left. Um, and Gintoki pulls out the letter from the last episode and gives it to him, and reveals that Kagura has been sending him letters the whole time, but she doesn't know where he is. So they keep getting returned to odd jobs, and Gintoki just hides them. So she doesn't realize that he's not getting them, um, not maliciously, but just like so because he doesn't know where he is either. Mm-hmm. And so Nobody it's just knows. to make her happy that she he thinks that she thinks he's getting the letters. Um, and Gin is going to start walking like he starts walking away and he says that he never really had a family at all. So he should cherish the one he has, even if it's all that's left. Um, Umi Bozu reads the letter and it's a letter from Kagura that says that she feels like if she stays on Earth with Gintoki and them, uh, she'll learn how to get better and better at saving people. And once she's learned fully how to do that, she wants to join him as an alien hunter. And so he chooses to walk off and leave Kagura there with them. Uh, and then it's revealed that Kagura was down under the bridge the whole time, uh, crying to herself. And Umibozu decides that he will let her live her life the way she wants and will wait for her until she's ready. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> some things that I liked on this one, when she wakes up and she's looking for the seaweed, she rips off the other side of his uh, hair and they... Yes. Like, ri- like clean. <laughs> Lean just like rips it off, and then they keep saying that like you're you're a baldy, but only on the right side. Yeah, <laughs> well, on. yeah, he says that everyone calls him baldy, and then he corrects them that only on the right. Yeah, only on the right. Because at um, first, at first he said when they called him baldy, he said only on the top because he had the old man hair around the yeah. back. Uh, and then she rips half of it off, so then he says only on the right. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> I really liked it when him and again actually teamed up because they're just constantly talking shit to each other. Like, hey, you're yes, bald the, and you only have one arm. That's probably the best part of the episode because that's like, Umibozu loses his arm and then eventually Gin's arm gets hurt. Mm-hmm. And so he so, can't use it either. So they both only have one arm. And they have a very cool moment where uh, they say that between them, they have two working arms and that's good enough. And they actually team up. 
Yeah, and it it was really cool to see. I really liked it. I feel like the action's starting to get just a little bit better as well because what we've talked about. It, a it is, more. yeah. It's it's they're putting more focus into it. I think. Yeah, which is nice because, like I said, there's nothing funnier than a well choreographed fight if you do it right. <laughs> there's nothing as good as an ass beating sometimes. <laughs> um, yes. I liked it when he revealed his uh, arm thing because he doesn't mention it a lot in the beginning. They don't, you don't even know it until he loses the arm and you see that it's metallic. But then he talk, starts talking about his doing what his son and how the only reason he was ever able to stop was because of Kagura. And then it kind of goes back to what was said in the previous episode, where in the beginning Kagura says that he wants his, she wants her older brother to come back. So I assume that this is at the point that she said that is when the act has already been done where he attempted to kill the dad so even at that like uh even with that moment in mind she still thinks that she could probably have the family back together and she would like it to be that way which kind of just shows how much she cares about family in general and stuff like that uh so i like the kind of backstory and how you kind of get to see a little bit more about like he was just afraid in general about he wouldn't be able to stop himself he wouldn't be able to hold back his yato nature and he didn't want to end up hurting his daughter because he thinks that his daughter would be like his son because if his son's like that then obviously then in his mind he thinks that his daughter would get that way too and if that were to happen then he would have to do the unthinkable and there would be no one to stop him at that point um and he just doesn't want to st- he just doesn't want that to happen and he learns through the letter and through in general that his his daughter is not like that like you like gin says he has to have more faith in her than what he was having so to have his kind of fears be put to rest a little bit i thought was very nice i thought it was very touching i really did like at the end when he's telling her like to go be happy and i'll be waiting for you i'm a big sucker for anything that is family related in general brother brother stories father son father daughter anything like that so all this stuff i was eating up going oh yeah this is the good <laughs> this is the that stuff good I, shit yeah <laughs> it's that good shit i'm a big fan of it um that's why i like Fa- <laughs> fast and the furious so much when don says it's about family i could tear my eyes like you're damn right it, it <laughs> you're is. goddamn right he's right you're damn right it is the man speaks the truth he may be too fat but damn it he's <laughs> he's right <laughs> So I really like that um, that moment of family talking. I like it when Gintoki is going away and says you should appreciate it because it's always the people who don't have it that truly understand how good it is. And he says basically, I don't have a family. I wish I had a family even if it was your family. And it's only people that don't have it that really appreciate stuff like that or can truly see the value. And this is also the funny part where it's revealed that, the, <laughs> which I think the reason why Umiboza realizes that anyone is going to be listening into their conversation is because uh, Shinpachi, who was not, it was not shown to be a part of the conversation at all, after Gin is walking away, he walks up behind him and says, I'm, I'm, I'm back in odd jobs and you're never getting rid of me. And by the way, I see you as family. And he just walks off crying. <laughs> Because he was here, yeah, the even though he was not there at all, he was not there at all. <laughs> he's crying, and then he goes like, "Well, now I thought you quit, man. This is so <laughs> it's kind of just like, oh, okay, whatever, <laughs> whatever you say, man." Um, I really like that. So it was pretty funny when he was also saying like, uh, he was able to realize. Oh, obviously, Kagura is listening to in too. <laughs> it's not. It's not that hard to figure out. I also did like the just justification of them having this extremely serious um conversation after pissing on the corpse of a warm alien <laughs> yes pissing on the alien corpse yeah if something <laughs> that does get brought up again because it, it follows into the next episode kind of at least at the beginning of it this very dumb yeah it does. <laughs> of pissing on a worm so yeah i really liked it i think it also sets up for a lot of more interesting stuff in general and in terms of all these episodes i really liked hearing a little bit more about Kagura uh as always as we've said in the kind of episodes I had been a big focus on trying to learn more about what Gintoki's backstory was because that's something that's was in my mind going like what's his deal what's stuff like what's what's going on with this and funny enough I'd never at one at any point did I think of that for Kagura but after seeing it here I was like oh damn this was actually a super <laughs> nice uh, backstory for her and I really appreciated it so it's, I think it kind of goes with what you were saying where it, it, it d- does sound a little bit harsh to say it was a nothing character but in the sense of like she didn't really have a uh, backstory that we knew of she didn't really have a motivation that we knew of stuff like that she was very much just a, a very strong girl who was very funny and had a very 
a lo- huge loyalty tinge to her. So these kind of episodes help kind of flesh her out a little bit more and make her that much nicer. I also feel like it also helps uh, contextualize some of the stuff that she's been having with Tay. Where you see, like, when she was little, she's like, oh, she's very much uh, into the idea of having her big brother coming back. So she very much likes the idea of family. So she treats her like a big sister. And she's very much down to kind of do whatever. And so I think that kind of goes back to that a little bit of her, in general, kind of wanting to go back to that big family kind of lifestyle. Which she kind of has now at uh, Odd Jobs. So it makes sense why she was so hurt over them basically wanting to get rid of her so quickly. (laughs) Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> it's what I feel about it. How about you, Zen? What do you feel? Yeah, it was really good. I liked the whole little Umibozu, like side thing. Helped out Kagura a lot. I like her a lot more as a character now, just because like she was always funny. But now at least there's like there's some more to it than just the funny, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um the Gintoki team up with Umibozu was awesome. The uh <clears throat> The bit where they're just standing there pissing on the worm is super funny to me <laughs> because they're just like casually talking while they're doing it. Yeah, they're having a very uh, casual conversation over this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the giant alien corpse that they're pissing <laughs> on. Um, and the ending, yeah, it was very, very heartwarming conclusion where they're, he gives him the letter and the, it had, Kagura was reading it like in a narration format over him holding the letter. It was good. Yeah, very good, good stuff. Like I said, family, Dom was right. Very important. Uh, I also, I just to mention it before we move on, I also did like that the continuation of no one respecting Prince Hada, even though he's supposed to be this huge, big diplomat that his death would cause huge problems. He constantly gets shit on no matter what. Yeah. Because even it when he's doing the right thing. So funny, the the. The like, nonchalant casualness and the way that the guy pushes the like doomsday laser button. So yeah. fucking funny. Oh yeah, is this the button? Well, then when he tells him, like, oh, you can stop it now. They're, they're, it's safe. Uh, too late now. <laughs> There's no stop. Yeah, he's it. like, oh no, I can't stop it. <laughs> uh, well, too much. It really does feel like he kind of just always wanted to press the button and it didn't really matter. Yeah, like he didn't give a shit about not pushing the button. He's just using his uh, daughter as an excuse, which I would fully believe. Um, yeah, so great, great uh, little arc slash mini set of episodes. Let's move on to the next one, which is funny enough, kind of a follow up, kind of just like the aftermath, the goofy aftermath to the uh, Cogger is leaving arc, which is episode 43. Make characters so anybody can tell who they are just by their silhouette. Yes. Which is a, uh, that's that's the reason why Jotaro, his hat and his hair are the way they are. Yeah, they are. It's one hundred percent. That's the reason why. If you never knew, and in general, they tell you. So here's some actual writing things that I've learned. One, make a very nice silhouette if you're doing an animation thing, and two, never have characters that have the same uh, starting initial to their name. Obviously, JoJo throws that shit out the window. <laughs> But, in general, you shouldn't do it because it confuses the person who's doing it. Because if you have a character who's main character who starts with an S, and then you have his best friend also start with an S, and then people will be like, I don't know, it's sh- uh, like Shinji and Shinpachi, they don't know which one is which. Because people have bad memories, <laughs> so they'll constantly get confused about it. So it's very easy to just give them a different name. There you go, writing tips from us. Go ahead and use it for your yeah. great your great novel, yeah. your great fan fiction, whatever you feel like putting down. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you make, now you know. Yes. It's uh, so it's a two-parter, um, sort of. It's like a, it's weird in that it's a two-parter, but then the second part is like not, it's like a half also. It, it Basically, kind of... the way that it's that the way they phrase it is, this one ended a little early, so we're just starting the next one. Yeah, it's kind of like so, the other the the love manual one, the one that goes into the yeah. Shishin Gumi one, yeah. Because they, they play the ED, and then they cut to a, a second bit. So the majority of the episode is the first bit, which is uh, Kagura is coming back after her father left, because obviously he said that she could stay. Mm-hmm. And um, she decides to spy on them to see how sad they are that she didn't come back, because <laughs> they don't know that she's back yet. And yeah. it turns out that like no one is really that sad about it. Like Shinpachi's like, yeah, I miss Kagura. And then Gintoki comes out of the bathroom and reveals that because he pissed on a worm, his dick is swollen now. <laughs> and he's very, very distraught about it. 
<laughs> very distraught. Can't get He's over this. It's like most of his dialogue in this episode is like trying to find a good urologist. This is also where we um, reveal where the ultimate reveal, maybe the biggest reveal since the Batman has a very average dick in that one DC Comics episode. But we learn from Gintoki himself. He says, I have a good modest penis size. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the most humble way of describing it in any way. Um, and so now that Kagura is gone, um, the other female characters are starting to apply to be the new main like lead girl, the main yeah, heroine. The main heroine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so it's uh, it's Ote, Catherine, and Sachan who are all there like applying to for her position, and they're arguing and fighting over it. And uh, Hasegawa, Shinpachi, and Gintoki all give them like trials that they have to pass. Um, Catherine is immediately eliminated for not being hot. <laughs> and every single one, <laughs> immediately, they, they, every single one, they say you need a, a pretty face, style, and personality. And every start of the start of every single one is are getting eliminated. <laughs> yep, immediately. And it comes down to Ote and Sachan. Um, Hasegawa starts checking out their bodies and gets punched out through the building, <laughs> and that scares Gintoki too much to want to pick one of them as the winner. Yeah. So he's like having a panic attack, like Shimpachi, wake up, wake up. <laughs> uh, and Shimpachi, who has been for some reason wasted and singing karaoke of uh, Suchan or whatever the girl's name is, yeah, Suchan, even though uh, he has not drunk Otsu, anything. Yeah. yeah, he's acting like he's super drunk. And he says that Otsuchan must be the winner, so they end up getting beat up anyway and like blasted out the doors of the building. Yeah. Uh, and that's when uh, Otose think... reveals that Kagura has been there the whole time. And uh, what if she says, like, sorry, I'm not hot, but I'm so, sorry, the only one who can a... handle you guys. Yeah, I don't have an hourglass figure. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, but I'm the only one that can handle you all, so I have to be the main character. And they uh, they have a nice little laugh, and then it ends. Yeah, she's eating. She goes. She's just basically eating at that point. Uh, this part one here, uh, I actually ended up really like. A lot of yes, it is I thought it was really funny. It is very um, funny. Is is this the one where um, they randomly have the note on the screen that? Uh, Otose's voice actor is Orochimaru. Yes! I have a note here. The, <laughs> I have my exact feeling. Holy shit, Otose is voiced by Orochimaru! Yes, which I didn't realize either. Uh, it, it, uh, but that's it, crazy. That's so good. Because in the background, when they mention it, she briefly turns into a snake. Yeah, she and, gets like the crazy tongue and everything. <laughs> uh, and there's a note on the screen that says the, the voice actress for Otose is the same one as Orochimaru. <laughs> And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, that was a great... Re the, this episode, the last episode, it was like a back-to-back -back effort references to Naruto. And then we're about to get into a whole other set of Naruto references, too. Oh, There's yeah. more to come. More to come. But that one was really good. I really did like that. I thought it was super funny. Just similar, similar to the Itachi speech, whenever they drop Naruto references, maybe it's because it's literally airing the same time as them. It's super funny to me. Uh, maybe it just shows uh, another good I reference like is when Tay and Sachan beat people up in this episode. They oro 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 them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. They they do the the star platinum cry, which is great. Yeah. Um. So some other notes that I got here. I like that this episode they keep getting progressively drunker because Ote brings in the 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 so the the sake that she stole from her work. I also liked her line there when she says, like, because she dressed up like Kagura. She dresses up like a Chinese girl. And they say, like, why are you dressed like that? He's like, it's um, Chinese girl boost month at the... Um, yeah, Chinese, where Chinese girl booster month. And he says, what's being boosted? And she goes, men's fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great line. But yeah, they get progressively drunker. I also like when they are arguing. Um, they keep mentioning things about, like, having a Chinese girl that drops the um, the line that says... Uh, what What is the exact line? But they're basically saying it's like a verbal tick to say, like, uh, something like that. Or so say something like that. 
Uh, it's so played out. And then they start doing it. And then eventually over time, they just start dropping like random like <laughs> things to say at the end. Like, uh, which Nyan. I don't know if that is. I don't know if that's a Naruto reference either, because that's a big thing in Naruto's. Everyone has one. Yeah, everyone has one of those. Uh, one of my favorite ones is when Sacha just randomly says Mega Bazooka. <laughs> yeah, that's her end sentence <laughs> one. Is Mega, Mega Bazooka. Mega Bazooka. Uh, I really liked when Hisagawa was talking about what he wants in a woman. And then they show, <laughs> they show like, we can't actually just show you what he's describing. So here's just some stuff that's kind of like it. And it's like pictures of pudding. <laughs> yeah, it's like I was taking spoonfuls of pudding and stuff. Yeah, he's just like putting it to the side. Um, I thought that was funny. I also like that he does the Gendo pose from Evangelion, and they really focus in on it because at one point there's like a nine by nine screen of just him Gendo posing. Uh, I also like Kagura's like constant like she she really wants to hear them say we really miss her and we want her so she can make her entrance. But every day, just keep getting distracted by random things. And, um, like you said, Shinpachi, when he starts karaoke, he starts it out of fucking nowhere. Because they say, like, what do yeah, you think? Yeah, he just starts screaming. He's like, what do <laughs> like... you think? And he's like, dame, dame. <laughs> dame, dame. And he's, like, randomly just singing it in the back for the entirety of it. it was, I thought it was great. But yeah, I thought it was a very nice, like, follow up to say, like, ah, oh, here's some quick, funny bits. Uh, very well done. I also like that the, at the end when they're like, okay, we're just gonna sell it between ourselves because this is just useless <laughs> using them. So they're just gonna go fucking fight each other. I also like when they said, like, um, Tay doesn't have a personality. She's just a crazy punching girl. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh yeah, you don't even have a personality to speak of. You just are some kind of crazy fucking berserker. He's like, oh yeah, you wanna fucking start something? <laughs> she immediately goes to fight him. Uh, which was great. So yeah, very fun. Good, funny bits. And like I said, that Orochimaru bit, I had made me go, holy shit, I can't believe it's the same woman. And then it also made yeah, me realize... Yeah, that's super is, funny. Is Orochimaru voiced by a woman in the in the, in the the English dub of it? No. Uh, I don't believe so. Mm, Howard's. Uh, Steve Blum is Orochimaru in English. Oh, shit. Um, okay, but what if it was Steve Blum doing a woman voice? <laughs> For a Tose. For a Tose, yeah. <laughs> trying to think of it. That would be a really good joke. Because this is a joke that would just you can't translate over to, to the dub part. Because it's yeah, like, you have to I don't know how you would. It. You'd have to just make a completely random thing. Yeah, yeah it's like, oh, damn. Tom from Toonami. <laughs> I don't know. There's not a lot of jokes you could do there for Steve Blum. Uh, but yeah, how do you feel about it? Uh, it was good. Yeah, it was really funny. I liked all of the little bits. I liked when um, they went through like a solid 15 minutes of the episode and they were like, oh yeah, someone left this application for odd jobs uh, and it's just obviously Sachan and Is no one right? comments on that fact. No. And then she just drops down from the roof like she'd been there the whole time. Yeah, she had been there the uh -huh. entire time. I also like when yeah, they opened it. Like, just... just... mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say also like when they look at it, it's very clearly built to made to look like some kind of mail or a bride thing. <laughs> like it looks yeah. more like uh, she's ready to get married and not actually join odd jobs. <laughs> what were you gonna say about it? Uh, yeah, where it was like she's introducing herself and she's not wearing her glasses and she's like got a kimono on and shit, and it's just obviously her. Yeah, very. Um, it's very obviously her. Yeah, and then I like how uh, the episode ends with uh, Ote and Sachan just saying they're going to go to the riverbank and settle it <laughs> in a duel. If we'd ever <laughs> see the outcome of that duel either. Oh, here, here's another uh, bit, because I thought it was pretty funny, because it finally made me understand that they're, they're just constant shitting on Catherine. Like I said, Gintama has a very much like a anti-cat girl thing that I'm very into. <laughs> About yeah, it does. It always shits on. Uh, what is constant. what is such I'm saying? I'm a ninja, and I had glasses. If I had your ears, I'd have the per perfect trifecta of anime <laughs> girl tropes. Yeah, that's what she says. That's the only thing she's missing. <laughs> also, the reveal that the reason Catherine looks the way she does is that she's supposed to be middle aged. Yeah, she says my gimmick is being middle aged and cute, 
it's and working he, great. And I, I think it's Kagura that says it's not working at all. <laughs> it's not working at all. I was like, oh, that's great. They're just constant dumping. And every time she comes in, because at one point she comes in in a maid outfit, they're like, denied? <laughs> Not. Yeah, she comes in like a schoolgirl outfit, and they're like, no. No, just immediately. They just keep going like, uh, <laughs> you're denied. You don't have the face. You don't have the personality. You don't have the style. So I thought that was great. Continuing the anti-cat girl uh, <laughs> agenda that Gitama has here, that I'm bigging up on at least. So yeah, let's go on to part B, which is the start of the... I don't think it has a name. Oh no, since it... And that's the English title. Since it ended a bit early, we're starting the next one. Yeah, we're just going in. Some great energy, <coughs> honestly. Um, <laughs> some, some great... Ah, whatever. Start. Yeah, the so it starts with Katsura and them at a restaurant. And they're like... They've all got like their favorite food sitting in front of them. And they're all just ruling. And then uh, Gintoki's like, don't eat this. Because he's gonna ask us to do something. <laughs> uh, and then he's the first one that breaks and starts eating. Um, mm. Him and Kagura both. And so eventually you find out that Elizabeth has been captured by the, like, shogunate. Yep. And she's being held prisoner to lure out Katsura. And he's asking them for help. And they want to learn how to be ninjas. Uh, so they go to the Kunoichi Cafe and ask Sachan for help. And she says she can't go. Um, and she pulls out her sword and Gitoki like dramatically smashes it with his sword. <laughs> and trying to uh, and make an excuse. Like, he's like, uh, don't be don't be rude to us. It's on your phone in front of your customers. <laughs> uh and every time he does that, she does the whole like, oh my god, that's so hot. And I'm, I'm uh, into it. normally I don't find that joke very funny, but in this episode Every time she does it, Shinpachi's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Which is really funny to me. Because eventually they end up getting her fired because Gintoki steals her glasses. So she can't see. And so she like goes to serve a table and fucks up terribly. And she gets fired. And Shinpachi's like, oh, Sachan, hey, I'm really sorry. That's fucked up. And she's like, oh, God, that's hot. And he goes, that's so <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and so she does eventually decide to train them as ninjas and they have like Power Ranger colored ninja outfits except for <laughs> uh, Shipachi's which is cow print um, and they like argue over the Power Rangers color rules and stuff and then they decide to begin their ninja training yes and th then the ninja training is what starts in the next episode right yes okay okay so something to mention here, just because you mentioned it with the power training thing, I really like it that uh, Kagura says a red means leader, therefore I'm the leader, you're yellow, you're curry. And Katsura immediately goes, you're right. And he goes, whatever you say, <laughs> leader. And he immediately yeah. drops the issue. It allows her to be a leader, which he goes into the next episode where he keeps calling her leader and does he, doing whatever she says. I thought it was a good uh, starting bit right there. I like the color schemes that they go for. I think the what the name of their ninja group is called the Go Ninjas because they said the we Go look Ninjas, in, yeah, yeah, we look exactly like a Go a Go Ranger of some kind. <laughs> We're the Go Ninjas. Um, in the beginning, I really liked when uh, uh, <laughs> they keep showing um, the, when they're trying to get her away from it, and she's just it's it's weird because this is the only environment we've seen where she just immediately doesn't drop what she needs to do. To help Gintoki. It's actually uh, something I noticed. Is like she, She's actually just like, um, actually I have a job here. I can't really do it. I'm sorry. And usually in my mind it's like, well obviously she would just drop whatever because Gintoki's here. But she, her job here is so important. She's like, mm, um, I would. I totally would. But I'm working. So it's not something I can really do for you right now. She and then says, his immediate response is just to get her fired. Yeah, just to get her fired and be like, you have no excuse now. Let's go. And she... <laughs> 100% behind him and every given to give an essence on that um I also thought that this was actually in the beginning I thought this was a continuation of the uh homeless Elizabeth arc but no I think when we so did I well I think it sort of is because in the next one they, they talk about a little bit I think it's I think it kind of is yeah kind of the, he still isn't a hundred percent sure uh where Elizabeth is but it was the idea of just like Elizabeth has gone through so much 
Uh, of, of... Also, I love in the... I don't know if you remember the portion where he's having... He's, like, explaining to them that, that Elizabeth's gonna get executed, and she gets her head cut off, like, samurai style. Yeah. She deflates, because she's a costume. Yeah, I did notice that. She deflates and it's Yeah, like... and she floats, it's like cloth. Yeah. It's, it did, basically does nothing. But I liked it. Again, I like anything where uh, Katsura has to help Elizabeth, because this man loves... Elizabeth so much, his pet, his his companion, his best friend, whatever you want to call it, but he loves him so much, so uh, I like the setup for it as well. Also, showing him in jail as well, because again, it made me re- remember the homeless arc about how... Yeah, the, how, the homeless Elizabeth. Also, that at no point that Gitoki has told Katsura he knew exactly where, where Elizabeth was the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> Because at the end, uh, he's, what someone actually brought up, which actually was pretty funny, is that his reaction to Elizabeth being homeless is, huh. And then he goes inside completely ignoring it. Yep. Which is What's, great. They, they do an I'm Katsura joke in this one. I don't remember what it was. But it's, <sighs> like, completely ridiculous. It's something like, um, in the Kunoichi Cafe, I think Sachan has to put another thing at the end of her speech, like a Naruto thing. Yes, she does. Um, yeah, and uh, Gintoki's like, Katsura, is that a thing? Do all ninjas have to say whatever that word is? And he goes, I'm not that word. I'm Katsura. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that. I, was, uh, I didn't make a note of it, but I did think it was funny. He also has another one in the next episode. <laughs> which is Yes, the next I one's did. really good. The next one is really good. Um, so I like the setup for this one. Like I said, I like ninjas. So anything ninja related is pretty good. And this does lead to more Naruto jokes, basically, in the next one. So I thought it was a good setup for the next one. Basically, the beginning of the next one. I thought it was good. It worked out for me. Yeah, that's pretty much all it is. is It's there to be like, uh, the next one's coming up. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's a primer. To go hear it. The Go Ninja arc, as it's called in the manga, apparently. Which is funny. Uh, let me see. Anything else you have to say about it? Uh, no, it was it was pretty funny. Actually, I did like the joke. Uh, where Sachan is like, I can't. I don't have my glasses, so all of you look the same to me except for Kentoki. He's the only one like, that I can see. <laughs> uh, and then she's like looking at a dog statue the whole time. Yes, <laughs> not <yes>. him. <laughs> not it wasn't him at all. You're right. That was a pretty good gag. So. Episode 44, uh, Mom's Busy 2, so quit complaining about what's for dinner. You'll never guess why this... Th- I didn't know why this episode was called this until that fucking reveal at the end. <laughs> the most random reason they called it. So that's why this fucking episode is called that. Tell us what it's about, Zen. Uh, so... Sachan takes them to this place to practice their ninja skills. And they have to go and buy, um, like, a porno mag without being noticed by anyone. Um, And she does it. And then she tells them all to go and do it. And Katsura uh, goes to do so. And he does perfect. He does an amazing job. And then he spills his curry at the last minute. (laughs) And because his character is the curry ninja, Kagura has decided if he ever spills his curry, he dies. (laughs) <laughs> and so he spills a little bit of his curry and he like slow turns and he's bleeding from the mouth and he like vomits blood and passes out. She goes, Gordy! Uh, <laughs> Gordy Ninja! Yeah, and she's like devastated. Um, <laughs> uh, Kagura goes to do it and she's like crawling along the ground like crazy all over the place and like, wow, she's really good. And then she comes back <laughs> running up and like crying <laughs> because she got dog poop on her ninja outfit. Uh-huh. When it's just it's just the curry, right? <laughs> it's not dog poop. It's just it's just yeah, the curry. Yeah, it's just the, the curry. <laughs> the, that, the that, curry. They, they dropped. Yeah. yeah that she's fucking saw. She knew that was curry. Uh-huh. Still got hit by it. And then Gintoki sneaks up in a garbage can, and the garbage can gets thrown <laughs> into a garbage truck and crushed. And they're like, "Oh, that's crazy. He wasn't in there. Wait, was he in there? He's dead if he was in there." <laughs> And then he shows back up later, like, horrifically injured, and he's like, oh, no, I wasn't in there. He's like, oh, yeah, it's a good thing I went to the bathroom and got into a fight with some punks in the, in the bathroom. Yeah, I went to the bathroom and I got a fight. Uh, <laughs> um, 
and then Shinpachi ends up passing the test because he has no presence. He's so unremarkable that nobody <laughs> looked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty good. They eventually arrive to uh, rescue Elizabeth, and uh, they sneak in. Uh, Gintoki starts the attack by kicking someone in their hemorrhoid until it explodes. Um, Violent, too. Yes. And so they they decide to stir up a bunch of chaos because they don't have the stealth to sneak in. Um, And they finally make it inside because Katsura blows their hiding attempts because they're all hiding behind like a terrible graffitied brick wall that Gintoki puts up that looks nothing like the old Japanese walls they're hiding by. They say it looks Uh, like it comes from New York. Yeah. And then Katsura is just standing next to a tree, like, posed. And Gintoki's like, what are you doing? And Zura, get out of there! And he goes, I'm not Zura, I'm a pine tree. (laughs) Which is also not the kind of tree that he was standing next to. Not at all. Nowhere close. (laughs) And uh, then he sees Elizabeth and he rushes in in, like, a rage to rescue Elizabeth. Um, and so they all break hiding and end up rushing in and they end up fighting the, what are they called? The Ninja Five or something like that? The Shinobi Five. The Shinobi Five, yeah. And it turns out the leader of the Shinobi Five is uh, Zenzo, the guy who fought Gintoki for an entire episode mm-hmm. for that copy of Shonen Jump. Except Gintoki does not remember him <laughs> at all. Not a Scooby-Doo. Has <laughs> no idea. He's so upset about it. Um, and they have, like, a dramatic fight while everyone else is doing stupid shit. Um, so Katsura, Kagura, and Shinpachi are, like, they're having, like, a curry fight with the uh, their enemy ninjas. Yep. Um, and they, they, like, stop their curry-throwing attack by eating it. And they're like, ha, you have no weapons! And then Katsura's like, aha, but you fell for it! And it was all poisoned? But Kagura ate it, too, anyway, even though she knew that? <laughs> And so they're all, like, on the ground having, like, uh, intestinal distress, including Kagura. And they're like, Gintoki, we gotta get out of here. Kagura's gonna for pants. And Gintoki's like, I am not motivated by that. (laughs) That does not motivate me whatsoever. (laughs) Uh, Eventually, the girl who is with Zenzo uses, like, a rose mist to like numb Gintoki's body with some sort of like rose scent uh, and Sachan counters that with the horrible smell of Nato yeah. um, and so they end up winning in the end and it just doesn't matter because Kagura in like a fit destroys half the fucking uh, room that they're in so she can go to the bathroom and they look up and it turns out that the doll is uh, not actually elizabeth it's just fake yeah and so they all beat the shit out of katsura because it was a waste of his time and then he's like walking through the fucking slums on like a crutch uh just going elizabeth elizabeth where are you (laughs) uh and then then he opens a door and elizabeth answers the door and elizabeth's wife is like a prostitute he's got a wife now and elizabeth's wife's like a prostitute and he's got a little son He's like, I know mom puts on makeup and goes out with men to nice restaurants. And Elizabeth, like, punches the kid in the face. And <laughs> Katsura just closes the door and keeps looking for Elizabeth. Yeah, and apparently, according to this, that is not Elizabeth. It's uh, supposed to be the but same how species. Do you, I don't know. I don't know how to know, but yeah. Yeah, because apparently they all look <laughs> the exact same, <laughs> because we can base it off the little sun. Is that any one of the species of Elizabeth look exactly like Elizabeth? <laughs> so you wouldn't be able to find them. But yeah, his shock of just, like, closing the door. He's going, Elizabeth, where are you? So I think you're right. I think Elizabeth is probably still out in the streets somewhere homeless. Yeah, because they uh, they ask, like, where is Elizabeth? And he's like, oh, I don't know. Which I think is because he never found her after the homelessness <laughs> thing. No, he said, he's, he assumes, he says that they had an argument over food and they left. So I assume that happened right before his big thing, uh, where he kind of got caught. And that's why they're basically homeless, which is why Elizabeth was looking for him. 
because she uh, Elizabeth was either probably like okay the argument's done but then he was gone and then we start the oh now I'm doing a fan theory about where does the homeless Elizabeth <laughs> fit into the timeline of Gintama. where's the homeless timeline yeah so I think that's probably what happened is that the fight happened he ended up being uh, put under and he had to hide for a bit Elizabeth went back to where he was saw that there he was basically missing and now went went out looking for him and then obviously that's where we get into eventually the the downfall of Elizabeth where he Elizabeth then looks to side gives up looking for Katsura decides to go uh, maybe someone else will adopt me that doesn't work tries to work as a prostitute that doesn't work <laughs> ends up homeless on the streets and then ends up super homeless, and is what is probably Elizabeth is doing right now until Katsura can find them somewhere. Um, yeah, that's my current theory. Don't tell us if we're right or wrong or not, but that's what we're assuming is happening to Elizabeth. Uh, this episode. Uh, so, some of the references in this one that mm -hmm. I'm reading off of the wiki. Well, some of them I remember, but most of them are reading off the wiki. Uh, they call it Gintama Shippuden. When yes. they all show up as ninjas, um, they they have this thing that they say that's like curry ingredients, where they say like ro Rozier instead of Roger, and Kentucky's like, "What the fuck are you saying? <laughs> like, stop saying that." And it's only between Kagura and Katsura, who is for some reason like all in on Kagura's bullshit. Yeah, super um, into it. They. They do the Pegasus meteor attack. Yeah. Yes, that's what it was. They're fighting over the uh, like a special move from Saint Seiya, and they're like, "No, this one is the, it's like this." And he's like, "No, it's like this," and they just stop fighting. Like they're having this giant fight, and then it cuts back to them, and they're just arguing about this. Yeah. Um. There's also a reference to Detroit Metal City when he says Satsugai, which is apparently a spoof of the Detroit Metal City. That There was a little blurb on that one on top there. Um, I thought Sachan at the beginning was doing a... Uh, I think she ends up doing like a Naoto version of... I thought it was the the Dragon of the Darkness Flame when she shoots the Naoto at Gintoki's face. But apparently it is a reference to Sailor Moon when she does the Evil Spirits Be Gone the, from uh, Sailor <laughs> Mars. But I thought it was the, the dragon, but it was like... Because she does shoot out like a dragon. I had to see Sailor Moon. Yeah, it Moon. is like a Nato dragon, but it's... uh Yeah, apparently it's a Sailor Moon thing. Yeah. Uh, Some stuff that I ended up liking from this, just to go back. I really like at the beginning when they're training. Their entire training thing is that you have to get a dirty... Uh, dirty... Uh, porn mag, basically. Um, without being caught, and you have to do a super stealth-like. Uh... It, she says this is a good reveal of what everyone's tastes are, and she reveals that her tastes are is obviously into BDSM and masochism. Oh, that's a joke! I completely forgot. Shit, from the the heroin episode. At one point, uh, Hisagawa starts getting beat up by Saichan, and he go he goes like, "I'm a, mas a mas masochist too." And then when he's <laughs> he says that at the beginning, and then when he starts getting beat up, he's just like, "Oh yeah, keep going." <laughs> keep yeah, going. he does. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, yes, this is great. <laughs> I just remember that right now when she picked up the portal bag because that's what she was into. Um, they say Kagura is too young for that, so she can just get a copy of Jump, which is pretty good. I also really liked how how tearful she was. She guys, they gave her pity ninja points. Because yeah, she like, they're like, I'll, I'll just give you an A, and she's like, don't give me your pity points. <laughs> don't give me your pity. But she literally starts crying like a little kid who just like got something kicked out of her. It's really funny because she goes like, ninja, 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 and then she goes back and goes like, <laughs> it's like a slow build up yeah, to the cry. She's like, yeah, and she doesn't like run back either. She's like sad walking and crying. <laughs> yeah, it's very much very kid like, <laughs> which is funny. Um. The, the 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 curry stuff was really funny. I did like the payoff at the end when <laughs> with all the curry ninjas. What do you when you think that he's gonna be the only curry ninja? And he's like, ah, oh, no, we studied your technique, and they all have curry in their hand. Yeah, they're like, we know your your moves. Also, your I really like the fight scene where Katsura is fighting like an army of samurai, and he's just shoving curry in all their faces. <laughs> yeah, he's just like nonstop shooting, throwing curry at them. <laughs> Um, the wall that looks like it comes from New York. That's how they describe it. And then when a guy comes over, he goes like, Hey, I found a bunch of guys. They're behind that wall that looks a lot like it comes from New York. 
immediately calling out yeah. to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally like a graffiti-covered brick wall. It's so fucking funny. Yeah, I like it when they're invading the castle. It looks a lot like uh, Takeshi's castle or MXC, the most extreme Yeah, challenge. it's like a uh, yeah, most extreme elimination challenge, like yeah. trials. And they're like, oh my god, they're making it past the mechanical traps. <laughs> Which I thought was really good. I was like, oh, I know, I know all these traps. <laughs> this is good. Um... Obviously, the I'm not Zura, I'm Pine Tree when he's trying to be a ninja. Yep, I'm uh, not Zura, I'm a Pine Tree. And it was not a Pine Tree he was standing next to. Yeah, I like that the Shinobi Hot Five have their own version of the, the ninja thing. when Because when they do when they say their name Shinobi Five, uh, the classic Sentai thing of having your, all your colors behind you explode happens. Yeah, and then also apparently the Go Ninja means five ninjas. And then they're the enemies of the Shinobi Five. <laughs> <laughs> five on five. Um, ah, shit. There was a oh, when it's really funny when so when Gin and uh, Sensu are fighting, uh, he says, "If only we had met under different circumstances, I think we could have been allies." And he's like, and he gets pissed at him, and he goes, "Like I have met you under different circumstances." Well, yeah, he goes, "We did meet under different circumstances." <laughs> And I hate you. <laughs> That's the reason I don't like it. it uh, I really like the the relationship we have him because he totally remembers him. I also like that he calls him Jump Samurai. He doesn't remember his name. Yeah. <laughs> Just jump, jump Samurai. samurai. <laughs> Come here. Uh, I also like the brief fight where they are fighting against each other because it, again, is really well animated and it's well done. And it only lasts for a little bit. Uh, when Sachan is fighting the girl one, which is called the Rose, I think her name is Wakikaru, something like that. Um, <clears throat> they start talking shit to each other, and then when they actually start fighting each other, they're just like literally throwing fists to each other, like doing a cat fight, basically. Yeah, yeah they're like talking all this shit, like, like, oh, you're the only people that, the only reason guys liked you in school was like their glasses fetishists. And they're, like, having this long talk, and then it shows them fighting, and they're just, like, pulling on each other's hair and shit. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a pretty good reveal. I like that end reveal of the Elizabeth thing, because it really does come out of fucking nowhere <laughs> when he sees them. And, um, I also like the, the wanted poster he has to look for Elizabeth is just straight up a picture of Elizabeth. I don't know. I, something about just going, have you seen this alien? And it's just Elizabeth I thought was funny. Uh, I liked his reaction when he thought that Elizabeth was dead. <laughs> Even though it, he's so distraught, but they're very much, it's very clear, like, it, Elizabeth's not here, man. We told you at the beginning. We don't have him. It was a, it was a trick. You were here for nothing. He's like, oh. Shit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I really like this. I also did, like, when Kagura, oh man, there's a really gross joke. I just wanted to mention because it, it was gross. When the, the muscle, the, um, the muscle ninja, he he's going to go do like a steroid move and he gets a bunch of muscles and then it all comes out his ass. I thought I was like, Oh God, that's disgusting. Yes. Cause I, I assume it's that he, that he shit himself, himself from eating the poison curry. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Oh God. Cause it was, it was There's really... another gross poop joke too, where Gintoki, when he kicks the guy with the hemorrhoid and then he stands up and he's got shit all over his foot. Yeah. I was like, damn, this is a shit, <laughs> this shit filled so, episode. A lot of shit in this episode. I can understand why this is in constant flux of losing its time slot if it's got stuff like this going on. So yeah, really liked it. Liked it a whole bunch. Fun, good old ninja times. How'd you feel? It was good. Yeah, it was fun. I like Katsura episodes. He's one of my favorite characters. Um, everything that he's in is really funny to me. Um, the uh, fight between Gintoki and Zenzo was actually pretty good. Like, it had some cool shots in it. Like, when he kicks uh, Zenzo away and he, like, flips his scarf out into wings. That shit was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I thought the Saint Seiya argument was really funny. Um, <laughs> when they're, like, in the middle of this life-or-death sword fight and they take a minute to, like, argue about the posing of fucking Pegasus Meteor Attack. Like two dudes on Twitter, um, just like, all right, come on, we have that's not right, man. That's <laughs> you, what yeah. you're doing is from front to front to jump. Um, I like how last time they fought, they had like they gave each other like a little shonen jump speech, and then Gintoki does it again when he does the <laughs> I wish we had met under different circumstances thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
And uh, I like when Kagura's just had enough and destroys the entire fucking room. Because yes. she's just not into it anymore. <laughs> she's just really showing that she is. Oh yeah, she's a stupid strong and she could probably easily taken them all down. But she was just wanted to go with the ninja theme and see where it goes. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, and that's episode 44. Now we're on to the final episode, which is probably going to be the easiest episode to talk about, I think. Episode 45, Walk Your Dog in an Appropriate Speed. (laughs) Featuring Sadaharu. I think the first Sadaharu episode since the last one. The the one that... Technically true, no matter when the last Sadaharu episode was. Really? Oh, yeah. I well, no, right. because you said it's the first Sada Haru episode since the last time we had one, which is, like, that's <laughs> always true. God damn, that fucking Thor Twitter thing got me. <laughs> it fucked up my words. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best Sada Haru episode since last time we had a Sada Haru episode. <laughs> Gonna start um, saying that for every Sada Haru episode. Yeah. This one's kind of a just a, just a jokey episode. Uh, Sada Haru grows in size and turns into, like, a monster. And they want to try to save him. And it turns out that the reason that he is he has become a monster is because they did some ancient ritual. And it turns out that it's because they've been giving him fucking strawberry milk. Yep. Um, and it turns him into the monster. And two shrine maidens are like trying to uh, they're like not shrine maidens anymore. Yeah, and, one uh, is a hostess club and the other one isn't. Yeah. One, one runs like a hostess club. And Sadaharu grows so big that his head smashes through the roof of the place. Um, like the roof of Gintoki's Ajab shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people on the street start attacking him with like stones because they're afraid of him. And Kagura tries to protect him and gets hit. And when he sees her get hit, he snaps. And he turns into a, a monster and starts rampaging through the city. And uh, they end up like getting him to run into a baseball stadium where they have to throw a baseball in the perfect shape of like a pentagram to turn Sadaharu back to normal. Uh, and they do it right at the last minute. And those shrine maidens are like, yeah, we figure you probably won't want them anymore. After, won't, won't want him anymore after that. So we'll take him. And Kentucky's like, who do you think we are? We're, we're keeping Sadaharu. And it ends with them taking Sadaharu for a walk. Yeah. And then also the translator says thank you from there as well. Because up until this point, the trans- they had a translator at the beginning and all it does is talk shit about them. Uh- <laughs> yes, it's, it's like, it's funny because all Sadaharu ever does is just go, Woof! and and it's like a three sentence translation every yeah. time. And like Shinpachi's is so long and it's about like, oh, you think you're the one that takes care of me? Someone should take care of you. Nobody respects you. You're the butt of every joke. You're fucking pathetic. And he says, like, you have no girlfriend as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Calls it baited list. Yeah, basically. The Kagura, what is saying, making fun of the fact that she got seven from the fan pool. Yeah. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them how much you love me. And, and the translation's like, well, I love you more than the Shonen Jump readers who only put you seven <laughs> on the fan pool. And then Shibachi says, I understand, I was voted 8th. <laughs> yeah, and then Kagura's like, how do you even know that? <laughs> She's, like, really angry about it. She is. Uh, I forget what it says about Kintoki, but I think it also says something to make fun of him. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, I also like that this is the continuation of, like, the um, the weather girl that uh, Gintoki really likes, where we learn that, so the last time, for she a got- joke, they married, she got married, and he got super depressed about it, and in this episode, it's revealed she's getting a divorce. Yeah. Citing uh, different beliefs. Yeah, different beliefs, and one of the Shrine Maiden says different beliefs are what gives the spice to the relationship. Um... Yeah, let me see some, some of the other stuff here. I like that part about uh, it. I liked when Okita... I like the part where... Uh, yeah, that was what I was going to say. Yep. When he destroys the cop car and Okita's just clung to his fur, too. Yeah, but I also like that he like tries to... This is the continuation of Okita with a megaphone, 
where he tries to calm down the situation where he's like, please stop, stop right there. And then she, she calls him basically, oh, no, he said you're going too fast for how fast you're walking your yeah. dog. He, he says, do you know how fast you're walking your dog? <laughs> like, it's a speeding ticket. Yeah, and then she's like, does it look like I'm walking him? He's like, well, now you're under arrest for hurting an officer's feelings. <laughs> yeah, we're going to arrest you for obstruction of justice for hurting an officer's feelings. Yeah. And he tries to hit him with the rocket launcher and it doesn't work out because he immediately destroys the car. And then in a very nice uh, bit to get rid of Okita from um, Sadaharu, they show Hijikata and he's like, hey, Okita. And then he has like a shit ton of people with rocket launchers. Yeah. <laughs> and he gives him a smile like, hmm. <laughs> he fires. He doesn't even give him a chance to get off of Sadaharu. Um... I like after Sadaharu turns big, there's a thing where they're getting invaded by the media and they have to blank him out. Um, uh, with Shidpachi, when he's being interviewed, he's like, sir, tell us about the giant dog. He's like, oh, sorry, so sorry, so sorry. He's like, we're not looking for an apology. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. And then when he goes to Kagura, she's like beating the rug. He's like, ma'am, ma'am, tell us what you feel about the dog. And she's like, what are you doing here, huh? Get out of here. I hate the media. Get basically like Napa. I hate the media. Get get the hell away from here. We're just honest people trying to live our life. Um, and when she says like, we're not going anywhere. And then she starts blasting out that the news anchor is having an affair with the, the reporter. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's not true. <laughs> And then when they go to the funniest shit is in Tokyo's though, yeah. where he just fucking hits her with the scooter. <laughs> yeah, he hits her with the scooter. And he's like, don't jump in front of me. And then they do it again later and then on. Later on. Yeah, when they're running, they're chasing, they're like running away from him to try to get him at this baseball diamond. And it's the news anchor girl talking. And then she just gets crushed by both of the scooters, just yeah. landing on her back. Perfectly. Um, yeah, and then they also show the, the continuation of Gintoki's penis as his fly was open. And they just do a quick zoom in shot of this blurry thing. He's like, I can't believe my fly was open that entire time. <laughs> That's annoying. Um, I think they start talking. They also do a pretty nice thing of where they're talking about Sadaharu about how um, they're causing a lot of problems to Atose because there's too many people coming over. So they're saying basically, well, we're going to have to move. Um, uh, and then they say like something like we have to do something with Sadaharu and then Catherine says like so you're it's gonna be pretty hard to kind of like just abandon him he's like we're not gonna abandon him we don't what's the purpose of adopting a dog if you're just going to get rid of it eventually it just doesn't make any sense it's not really a problem part of the the deal here and that kind of goes back to the end of it there which i felt was a very nice uh thing to people in general like hey if you're gonna be taking care of a fucking dog take care of the goddamn dog <laughs> don't get rid of it i was like yeah hell yeah tell it to those people I like the reveal of how he actually got there, because we actually didn't know. He just kind of showed up on the doorstep, and the priest is saying, like, oh, yeah, he we was ours, but we kind of gave him up, so we're the ones that gave him up to you, and yeah, we're going to take him back if it's too much of a trouble for you. We understand. And he's like, no. After all the dumb bullshit we had to go through, we're keeping the stupid dog. <laughs> he's a part of us. So, uh, yeah, like I really like the bit um, where they have a really tiny one. And they give it milk and strawberries to <laughs> make it Dude. transform, and it stays. Really, it, it turns into like monster mode, but it stays super fucking tiny, yeah. and it still has like a high pitched little bark. Yeah, this is great. I also like that they he choked out Catherine as well because she tried to speak to the media immediately. <laughs> She's like, "Oh, you can listen to me to hear my side of it," and then they just start choking her out. He's like, "Yeah, I think see Shapachi, how... like chokes her to death." Yeah. <laughs> And she's like, do you see how they treat them? This is how they're really like. I also like when they start trying to do the ritual where they're like, oh, we just need you to kind of defend uh, us for a minute. And then when Sadaharu comes in, he's like, I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm not going to last 10 seconds, let alone a minute. Uh, there is also a good bit at the beginning where um, I forgot it, where uh, Gintoki, I, f I forget what he says, but he basically hits... Sadaharu, and then Sadaharu fucking backswipes him straight out the door. <laughs> and he has a giant... Yeah. <laughs> and the translator says, like, hey, ouch, that hurt, don't do that. 
So even though he's huge, he still totally feels faint. But yeah, like you said, this was a very... And even in the beginning of the episode, they say like, hey, this is just a dog story. Kind of just sit back, relax, enjoy. And I did. I thought it was good. It was much better than the last one uh, that we had. <laughs> so this is the best Sadaharu episode since the last Sadaharu episode. <laughs> Uh, how'd you feel about it? Uh, it was good. I really liked it. Um, I thought the baseball bit at the end was really fucking funny. When um, actually, I thought multiple parts of that were funny. One was the you have to hold him off while we do the incantation, and they're just like doing dumb shit. And Gintoki's like, that doesn't even look like an incantation. <laughs> um, and then eventually Gintoki gets knocked into one of the shrine maidens, and they get her flute stuck in like each side of their mouth. And Kagura goes, clench your teeth. And she kicks it in half. And Gintoki's like, that broke out half my teeth. <laughs> uh, and, and then, then Kagura says, don't worry, they'll grow back. <laughs> don't worry, they'll grow back. <laughs> and the other girl still has the flute stuck in her mouth, too. Yeah, for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and then the other girl ends up constantly getting hit with the baseballs when they're throwing it. Yeah. That was really good. They just keep throwing Even when she has her big moment, she still doesn't catch it. Because <laughs> she has like a whole speech. Yeah, she doesn't something. at all. No. Nope. Uh, it, it bounces off her face and then her sister goes, it hit you in the face again? <laughs> What are the chances? I also like the little chibi things, too, where they show it, and they just keep showing that he's only interested in chasing Shinpachi. It's the only person he comes close to at any point. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Very good. Very nice uh, little episode here. So, that is it for these five episodes so far. I also did like the strawberry milk callback. <laughs> and yeah, at this point, anytime mm-hmm. it goes back to strawberry milk... I like that it there's a that there's a callback to it. Um Yeah, it was nice to have these kind of episodes. These were a good batch of five episodes as well. I kinda wish we got we could have talked about the Umi Bozo stuff a little bit <laughs> when I saw the other ones, but now that we got to it I really liked it. So yeah, next week we're looking at episodes uh forty six, forty seven, forty eight, forty nine, and fifty. I've also been corrected in that 50 episodes is not the end of season one. Season one actually goes up to 200s. Oh. Yeah, so okay. on, Crun- on the Crunchyroll, they break it down to say season one is... Yeah, no, season one is episodes one through 49, and then season one is also episodes... Like, it's weird because on the actual wiki, they break it down to say, oh, season two is 50 through 99, 100 to 150, and then season four is 151 to 201. Uh, But on Crunchyroll, it just says season one, episodes one for 49, and then they say season one, (laughs) episodes 50 for 99, but they have a break in between them. So that was what's getting me confused here as to why I was saying that we were done with season one. So I don't know why it's broken up like that. If you know why it would be broken up like that, feel free to tell us. But I looked at that and was like, what? That, that's weird. I, I was like, I don't know why it's like that. I've never seen that anything in anywhere else where it goes. Season one is episodes one through 201. <laughs> And then the next 50 episodes are season two. Actually, that's a lie. And then it's a little bit more of season two. And then we get into season three. It's a interesting choice for sure. But yeah, we will be back to talk about those other episodes. I'm considering at the end of season one, because that's basically an entire group of episodes done as far as I'm concerned. It's a 50 episodes is a lot, man. Yes, it is. Most anime seasons are usually... Uh, 25 or so unless you're one piece i guess i think one piece has like 3,000 at any given point <laughs> i think that's maybe the only one where i'd be like oh yeah i guess one piece has a whole bunch uh in a super sentai 50 uh 52 episodes is usually the amount of episodes in a entire season of super sentai so that's what i'm treating it as 50 is good enough but anyway join us next uh next week as we talk about that as always i'm woki and i'm here with zenrot you can uh, support Hello. us by... You can actually go check out Zen stuff. I never bring it up because I assume people <laughs> who listen to me already sing it. But you can see Shonen and Chill where he talks about all the Shonen Jump stuff uh, with Oceanas or Ocean Man, depending on how you want to call him. 
Uh, from what I understand, the entire show is basically just uh, uh, praising Jujutsu Kaisen, shitting on my hero, and then kind of skipping through the other ones. Is that correct, Zen? <laughs> is that a correct assessment? Uh, it depends on the week, but <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen does always get its uh, it gets its due. Yeah, my, my source, the the salty dudes in your comments saying, how come you didn't give attention to the manga that I read <laughs> the most? So yeah, you can join them there if you want some more Zen. If you want some more me, as always, you can keep following the channel where I have other videos featuring me and also Zen. We'll be back next week. Hopefully we will also be back at it with Yu-Gi-Oh! GX as well. But thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video or wherever you see us. So say goodbye, Zen. Around. You'll see us around. Yeah, we'll be around. You never know. <laughs> you can keep an audio of us. So. Here, there. Here, there, everywhere. If we ever get to the point where a lot of people follow us, we will record an alarm clock so that you can use us as your alarm clock as we say, hey, wake up. It's time. I don't know. <laughs> that would be a really funny alarm clock. <laughs> Do the, the, the Shonen Archive special alarm clock. <laughs> <laughs> if the first episode gets to a thousand, we will record an alarm clock to wake up people if they want to use it. We'll do a separate recording where we'll just go like, hey. It's time to wake up, man. Enjoy the day. We'll do it. Well, that's a taste of it. We'll figure out when it's actually time. But anyway, that's enough to talk about the future. We're done for now. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. Whew. Even with the good ending, we so we can't help ourselves. Sometimes we just need to go off topic. Yeah, we just have, you have to get a little tangent in there. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's just, it's just, it's just